Welcome to CS Guitars, The Science of Loud. If you've been with me for a while, you might remember this amplifier. It's the Begera 333 Infinium. This monster was my first foray into valve amplification. I played many shows with it, made a lot of videos with it, but for the last couple of years it sat unloved and unappreciated in a dark corner of my studio. I still get questions about this amplifier from time to time, but always feel awkward about directing people to my older videos on the subject because they are, well... The Infinium valve monitoring circuit regularly checks that the valves are all running at the right bias and rebiased. Well, let's just say that my presentation and production quality has come a long way since then. I fell out of love with this amplifier when I could finally afford more expensive and better quality equipment, so my question is, does the 333 Infinium still hold up as a metal amplifier now that I'm familiar with more expensive equipment? Let's address the elephant in the room first. This is one of the later Infinium models with the auto-biasing circuit which monitors the idle currents of the output valves, constantly adjusting it for optimal performance and preventing the valves from ever drawing too much power and burning out the surrounding components. All of those QC issues you've no doubt heard about related to earlier models than this and were resolved years before this amplifier was made. The stories of them all going on fire are grossly exaggerated by people who have never owned one of these amplifiers and most of the failures that did occur can be attributed to inexperienced users not knowing how to care for a valve amplifier rather than the brand being unreliable. When valves start to fail, you need to know when to stop using the amplifier or you'll burn it out. That's a problem not exclusive to Bugera. Now did we get all of that? Good. The internet horror stories of fire and destruction are not representative of my experience with this amplifier, nor are they representative of the countless other musicians that I knew in the local gigging circuit who were using these amplifiers constantly without issue. It's simply a case of blowing a few early teething issues out of all proportion in order to make a straw man of Bagheera because the internet loves to have someone to hate. Bugera make cheaper valve amplifiers aimed at beginners, but with all the looks and features of their bigger, more expensive brothers. The 333 Infinium is no exception here. A monstrous full-size head shell containing 120 watts of valve amplification across three channels. Effects loop, raw line out, master volume, and a built-in reverb assignable to each channel individually. Having the Infinium valve monitoring system doing the biasing for you allows for easy swapping between pin compatible 6L6 and EL34 power valves. It's a quad set of Tungsol EL34s that I'm running in this right now, a necessary upgrade from the poor quality Bugera badged glass that the amplifier came with. We'll get this cranked up through the attenuator to really get the amplifier working, throw some metal riffs at it and see if we can't light this thing up. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
finding very interesting about coming back to such a cheap amplifier after having played much more expensive amps like the Engel Savage, the Orange Rock of Herb, or even the Victory Kraken is that the Bugera does kind of hold its own in terms of sound, especially with the sculpting assistance of a Tube Screamer out front. The biggest difference is one of range. With the likes of the Rocker Verb, for example, I could get a dozen really good usable sounds out of one channel, either by manipulating the EQ controls or taking the gain from really low nice crunch to thick, savage distortion. With the 333 though, that's not really the case. I'm feeling there's only really one good sound per channel. The range on the knobs is either barely makes a difference or instant shit when moved territory, and I find that's representative of a lot of cheaper amplifiers and pedals. So while it's possible to get good sounds out of this amp, there are only like three of them. I've always really liked the crunch channel on this. There's a good thickness to it and a mid-range raunch which makes it ideal for your classic metal, like your Priest, Ozzy or Maiden, but it only really shines with the gain control above about halfway. It doesn't really do a nice low overdrive breakup kind of sound, but I do feel it's the more controllable of the two distortion channels and it works really well with the Flying V. <laughs> The lead channel is much more focused and aggressive with probably too much gain. I really like it as a step up from the crunch channel for solos, as it was intended to be, and gives much needed saturation for neck pickup lead lines. <laughs> Maybe a bit OTT for my tastes, but with a lower than standard tuning and active pickups, this absolutely satisfies a more modern metal application. It's got so much low end in there that it really feels substantial. Although with so much gain going on, it does have a tendency to squeal and feedback, especially if the guitar is in close proximity to the amplifier. So using a noise gate to cut down on that sound between notes is an absolute must when using the lead channel, which is probably why the XL version of this amplifier comes comes with a built-in noise gate. <laughs> The clean channel is surprisingly pretty nice, especially when utilising the built-in reverb and a delay through the effects loop, a benefit I suppose from having such a massive amount of headroom to play with. It is possible to overdrive it though if you're using high output pickups or if you've got the channel volume cranked up. So if you want the cleanest possible response, use low output pickups or back down your guitar's volume a touch or just don't crank that channel volume.
Despite the lack of usable range on the controls, this isn't as bad as I remember it being. There are a couple of great metal sounds in here, as well as a clean channel that I could absolutely use with the help of a few effects. And yes, it might be enormous. Yes, it might be vastly more powerful than anyone needs it to be, but you could play a show with this or put it in a record and as long as nobody saw that name, they'd never know it was a cheap amplifier. This is fine. And I understand that that's an anticlimax, but it'd be that way sometimes. And it didn't even go on fire once. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Keep it loud and stay safe. Well, I'm glad I didn't need this.